three three's hero pools get targeted pretty hard, and that still seems to be the case here. The Doom, the Pango, potentially for him, but uh, also the other two lanes could take it, and then the Bat Rider as well. Something they didn't want to be concerned with. Ten seconds remaining. Okay. Um, I think we're back. Hello, Twitch. Sorry about that. Just Five a quick seconds. little interrupt there. Had to reset the old OBS, and I think we're back good. So I'm going to... Oh. What did you do? You blew it up, eh? Blew it up. Well, uh, it looked like there was a, a lag hiccup, and then that caused OBS to crash. And it, one of, it was one of those kind of cascading sort of effects, you know, like classic, when one satellite classic. breaks and then it breaks all the other satellites. It yeah. was one of those. So You broke the satellites. Got it. Um, the satellites have been restored, though. We put a little wow. bit of Gatorade in Sparky's, uh, Sparky the Wonder Hamster's water, so I think we're we're cooking with fire. Um, so what did we miss? Quick recap. I don't know when exactly it DC'd, boys. Uh, Winter Wyvern <laughs> Tusk for NIP, Enigma, Lion for Fnatic, Bands, Doom, and Lone Druid for Fnatic, and then Necro and the Timber Saw taken out into another NI or another PA. Looks like a Darkseer game for NIP at this point now. Uh... See if Fnatic spot that and maybe could find some iron shell counters. Like they could go for an Oracle here potentially. Although Oracle's a little scary versus PA, but uh Iron Shell on Tusk, Iron Shell on Phantom Assassin, and then Vacuum into Winner's Curse remaining. are all extremely strong options. Plus they're looking for a three three hero anyway. Five seconds. Uh remaining. yeah, I would be pretty stunned if they did not take the Dax here next unless it looks bad here for some reason. I guess maybe they haven't been playing it that much lately. There's also still the Night Stalker too, uh, as a very viable option for NIP. Because that is someone, if, if Night Soccer goes for that ulti and he silences, that line is just so dead. <laughs> like, yeah. Dire team pick. Well, what's it going to be? The Bounty Hunter. Oh my god, this is so greedy. This is your 3, 4, 5 Lion, Bounty Hunter, and Enigma? Yeah. So especially against like DJ Bounty, like a Tusk, and there's that Dark Seer. So good call. But especially this, like with a Tusk. why they bring me in, guys. You know, I got you covered. Don't worry about it. What would we do without you, bud? I don't know. Life would be so hard without me. I think uh, Fnatic's lives are going to be hard against this Tux Darkseer PA based on their opener. This is like a lot of run at you Dota with a lot of damage. Ten seconds What's remaining. the pick here? Uh, I don't know. I guess it depends where this Five bounty goes. For the love of God, maybe it should just be a, uh, <laughs> a core bounty at this point. The, the one bounty. I don't know it's, how that uh, works. Uh, <laughs> um, I mean, I've seen it a couple times. I don't know. This just looks so greedy. Like, are they really going to try and run this as a, a support bounty with a, a Lion 5? It just feels off. Uh, take the Morphling Morph. into this game, eh? What's good about Morph here? Uh, the Arctic Burn is a nice one. To uh, You get to fly as Morph. That's pretty sweet. Snowball's okay. Uh, Darkseer, you get Vacuum. And Blink Strike 2. It is definitely a good looking morph game. They don't have the best instant disables for the hero either. Uh, this is certainly a game where a morphling player could carry his whole team. It kind of splits both ways though, doesn't it? Where it's isn't it kind of like PA versus anti mage again, where PA has this window where she can kind of fight and do some damage and get involved where morphling sort of no matter what item he's going for first, he wants a lot of time by himself to come online before he starts fighting. You know, you sort of need that it's, first uh, item plus one. It comes down to the morph player. Morph's a lot better now at early engagements. Like, True. If you can just get a good morph. It's kind of crazy how much damage you can do. Like, you just think if he manages to, uh, like, morph into the Dax here and even just Iron Shell himself, it's going to be so much extra damage. That's fair. Because, like, then you have a damage value still coming into your hero while you're morphing strength. So... Okay, uh, they need, oh, I don't know, this last pick. I, I guess this is probably going to be an Abed Morphling. I feel like he's going to have to carry this game. And we're going to have the Enigma on Ice Ice Ice. I, I'm pretty sure it is going to be a Jabs Lion and a DJ Bounty Hunter. So what position one can play fast? Um, possibly it has to be potentially going mid, right? Because you have the Morph who might go mid, and then they probably need one other hero just in case. It's going Back for the lone druid crowd. Oh, it's been banned. Okay. Oh, it's, they, I think they banned it themselves. Uh, they yeah. banned it themselves. Yeah. So they the take last out time the they tried the strat, they went with a jug. Uh, it was almost the same lineup. Well, it was a similar lineup. They had the bounty, the morph, uh, and then the juggernaut as kind of their jug is their active trio. Okay, ish. Um, oh, actually, it was a core. Oh, so they ran the core bounty. Ooh, that's interesting. So they've tried this before, and they actually beat Aster with the ice 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 bounty hunter. So maybe. 
Maybe it is the DJ Enigma, the Isis Ice Bounty. Five seconds. We've seen some teams do this Radiant uh, Enigma where they they play it as a support and you just keep pulling the wave. Um, but we've seen we've seen it both ways of the minor. So I'm curious how this is going to look between the two of them. And they will indeed go for the Tide. I saw Twitch chat actually called that one. Nice one, Twitch chat. They were calling Legendary. it in game one as well. And this game, it seems pretty well suited. They needed another big disable to kind of pull this team fight together so you're not completely reliant on the black hole. But this does make Fnatic pretty damn reliant on cooldowns to take early and mid-game fights. If you don't have Black Hole, Finger, Ravage... Yes. Even Morph is a long cooldown early on, too. Yeah, yeah, that's Five so... Absolute possibilities here. Great team fight potential, but huge cooldowns. NIP... The longest cooldown NIP have is Vacuum, basically. Like, they yeah. don't even need Winner's Curse, really, you know? Uh, so they just want someone else that plays really fast. Razor. The Razor was a really good band, the Death Prophet. Okay. So it is cooldown based, but it is just the one cooldown they have to play around. And, and yeah, I'm really curious. So is DJ taking the classic DJ Enigma? We're going to find out momentarily. So I'll, I'll put it this way. Basically, we've seen teams do it both ways. So they've had the position four bounty with the three Enigma, and you have them both play in lane. Or you can have it this way, which is the way that Fnatic have played it before, where the Enigma basically grabs the range creep from the wave, goes and jungles in the Radiant um, top shrine. You basically jungle in there, and then you're pulling the wave back for the bounty hunter. Uh, I would say this lion has a bit of a rough time, because he has to protect a Morphling versus a Darkseer and Tusk. I wonder if they can get away with the Morphling mid. I guess the Death Prophet is supposed to try and curb that, I would think. I mean, that doesn't sound like a great matchup for Morphling, but it doesn't sound that bad. I think you should be able to get some farm there, right? Yeah, because I, I don't think you can send this morph to a side lane. It's going to be pretty brutal, that's for sure. I really like this uh, Death Prophet final pick. I think they were lacking good sieging heroes, and she definitely makes up for that. Um, yep. Still pretty high tempo, like you mentioned. Even though it is cooldown based, she can still contribute even if that ultimate is off cooldown. It's sort of a slightly different, or on cooldown rather, kind of a, a different mechanic. I like it. I think it just really ties this together and gives them an AoE silence, which is great against a lineup like Fnatic has. Yeah, and like yeah, the before the BKB, it's pretty brutal for Enigma. Very long range, easy to hit. Honestly, any of their heroes getting silenced is really bad because they don't have the best ways to get rid of it, right? None of them really I know as except for the BKB, and then Morph will be going for perhaps the BKB, uh, and then the Tide. You have to actually take damage uh, unless he's going to get his Greaves up, which he might not even want this game. Uh, but it, Death Prophet gives my favorite thing in Dota, which is direction. It just makes it easy to play. It's like, hey guys, exorcism is up. What do you want to do? We have three options. We can take a tower, we can take Roche, or we can smoke at them. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty much all there is, right? Like, no, it's true. It's funny because she really is like, she, she kind of dummy proofs games in that regard. It's like, guys... I can only do this so many times. I have a finite amount of damage. If we don't win in a certain time frame, it's probably not going to go too well. I've got my abilities. Let's do something. And not many heroes have that same kind of clockwork like, guys, just trust me. We're going to win the fight. Except for clockwork. <laughs> That's true. Guys, just trust me. If I hit this hook. Oh, Abed, look at these plays. Oh, look. Yeah, oh, I'm walking in and my smoke popped and oh no, I, oh, I must have warded because I have an empty slot. Uh, and he's hidden his ward in this tree. Wow. Smarty arty. The next level play. Of course, uh, they, I'm not sure if he actually saw that ward come down. The fod is going to come in. He's going to do the tower check. And uh, he's like, oh, look, there they are. Oh, get the ward. Get the ward. Oh, no. Is this the first blood, though? It is. <laughs> Well, talk about your oh, all-time backfires. Dude. The baits. That was actually so <laughs> sick. Everyone does that little ward check now. You know, I actually taught Peter that. Oh, yeah? There you go. Yeah, that was me during NADCL cast. Wow. There, that's my, my one I, I, That's my one over Peter. That's... He might have just been humoring me, but he acted <laughs> like he didn't know. And that's all I needed. Boy. I'm just, I have this mental picture of you explaining this like revolutionary concept and PPD <laughs> just being so nice sitting there being like, uh-huh. No, wow. No, that's really cool. Wow. You came up with that yourself? Yeah. Wow. Man, uh, that's yeah. interesting. <laughs> Good start, though, for NIP. What a nice lad, you know? Oh, you got to get him in when you can. So Tidehunter yeah. down here. 
Rocking the scuba outfit, looking good. He came prepared. And up top, we're going to have a Bounty Hunter Enigma from Fnatic. They will be up against the Safe Lane Darkseer. Uh, DP will head mid against this Morphling, as we predicted. And right now, Lion kind of lingering in the jungle, postured near mid. MP down bottom, though. This Tide could take a quick tumble. He went level 1 Anchor Smash, so there's no Kraken Shell. And they actually find the kill. Soxa almost goes down in return. But one hit, he survives. These supports look suck. <laughs> for, for Radiant, dude. Like, if I'm in a game right now, I'm just, I'm not happy, you know? If I'm one of these core players and I have a support line and a support bounty hunter, I just know that uh, a whole lot's not getting done. Oh, nice. I can point this out because I've seen this a few times. So, you see Ice 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 with this double uh, ring here? Mm -hmm. So, if you notice, one of the rings is owned by DJ. Actually, they're both owned by DJ because he eventually gets headdress and he gets soul ring. So, a lot of teams have been doing this because the Enigma doesn't play in the lane, right? He just uh, grabs the Eidolons and then goes to the jungle. So he gives both of the Rings of Regen over to the Bounty Hunter so that he can survive in the lane. Really smart. Very few items yeah. that you can transfer like that and still get effect. So good on you. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane... I taught him that one too. You know, Jabs gets caught. And now MP, he does have that Kraken shell. So it's going to make him a little beefier. They'll have trouble cutting through that melon and they'll settle for just a pick on the Lion. 3-0. All NIP out of the gate. Uh, a hot start here. So I, I guess you're expecting it to look like this when you have this support duo versus that support duo, though, right? I mean, if you look yeah. where the kills are, it's a 102 Wyvern and a 003 Tusk. Yeah. Well, that's not particularly surprising. These are the sort of games where, you know, you, you cue a solo, <laughs> you grab a lion, and then so they pick sad. Tusk Winter Wyvern, and you're like, God, what am I going to do in the lanes? Even this Tide Hunter can't handle it, and he's built for this kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, this is why the morph was forced to go mid, too. Yeah, almost certainly. Morphling is doing okay mid. 11-4 compared to 9-1. Certainly not winning the matchup, but as suspected, getting plenty of farm. And I, I agree. I don't think it's going to get better than this in a side lane. Wow, look at this wave up top for Ice Ice Ice. As 3-3 uh, is actually just running all the way home for mana here. At, uh, everything coming in. And they're actually going to split it between the Bounty and the Enigma too. Kind of interesting. I wonder why he does this instead of, like, stacking. Like, you would think that DJ would want to be in the jungle stacking right now, right? One would think. Guess they just really uh, benefit. Oh, the second he gets three, he actually TP's bottom to catch this wave. And now he's going to start jungling down here. Oh, Todd huh. Hunter again. They've got a close-range snowball. They should have the damage this time, and they do. The level so two Tide cannot handle it. So what's happening is that they've, they've become too concerned with the bottom lane because they see that no one's playing up top and no one's really interfering with the bounty hunter. So that's why DJ has to make this rotation. He needs to come down here and start pulling this wave back. So he's pulling for a dual lane. That is how terrible their lane is. Nice. Like, it's one thing to Enigma pull for one. Whoa, are you getting some major lag here? No, I'm, I'm okay. Oh, okay. All right, cool, cool. A little bit of server lag for me, but we're, we're all right. Sweet. Uh, and now DJ grabs the next wave as well. And it takes a while to notice this when you're uh, NIP as well, right? Because they they probably still think he's around top. And now they're going to start seeing these waves and the lack of range creeps. And they're going to be like, wait a second. And uh, yeah, Peter's on the hunt. And he's going to sniff this one out. Trying to grab that big satyr, but a little bit too slow there. Would have been a nice grab. Abed oh, uh, posturing over, but not going to be able to grab that rune. No bottle anyway or anything, though. So True. not a big deal. And now he can just invis and follow DJ and wait for a, a good neutral steal or just take all his XP. I think for now he's happy just to leech that XP. Yeah, there was a ping from uh, Jab saying that the Tusk was on his way. And now they're even going to scan mid because uh, they, they're wondering where exactly they've gone. Still uh, this is looking a little disastrous here at the moment. I'm not going to lie. All three cores up. I mean, I guess the, the Bounty Hunter is the, the shining beacon here. And this Bounty Hunter is pretty scary when he gets to level 7. He, uh, he just suddenly does this massive amount of uh, damage. And yeah. he's holding all his points right now from Ice 2. Or at least one of them. I feel like it's, the max. it's hard to maintain that momentum with a Bounty Hunter when it's like, Okay, dude, you're our number one. We're really relying on you to carry this game. It's like, you're, you're right. There are moments where he can find pickoffs and stuff, but... 
the end of the day, it, it's still a bounty hunter. He still has a lot of kind of one and done mentality to him, especially up against a PA who just needs a couple of crits to cut right through him. He's got double stout too. I didn't even notice that. I mean, he, he's That's a tank. Something. He's a brick wall, but I don't know, Trent. That just seems unnecessary. <laughs> <laughs> There's no brood mother here, dude. Like, what is what is this? <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know about that one. I don't think so. Is it just for PVE, like tanking creeps, so that you don't have to worry I, about? I don't know. I didn't even. I mean, he was tanking them under the tower quite a bit, so that must be the reasoning. Okay, he makes it. It's got to oh, be for creeps. To get to the there, there's no here, heroes dude. where double stout makes any sense. No, no, yeah, it was definitely just because of uh, the way he was playing in the lane, because the iron shell. It just felt like it might have been a little unnecessary, but you know, had anyone rotated, of course, would have made more sense. Mm. Uh, he didn't go back to the bounty room, though. Maybe just assuming it was actually gone by now, but that bounty's still just chilling. Well, that's a bummer. And Peter in the danger zone here, but Morph can't get there in time. Doesn't have the wave for him, but he does have a haste rune. Might go for it. Doesn't want to dive under tower. Easy rotations from NIP. Morphling is definitely falling more behind, though, looking at the last hit chart. 38.10 compared to 26.5. Way more lopsided huh? than it started. He's able to, uh, so this is kind of interesting. Uh, maybe I just have missed the bounty games where they've done this, but he's basically just using it to jungle, right? It makes sense. He's just, like, axing it up here, but uh, it lets him stay off map but still gain gold. So, like, he's putting the threat of I'm in your lane while still grabbing a little bit of resources for himself. Mm -hmm. and he's going to walk right past that bounty room. Socks, Socks is like, like, oh, sick, thanks, dude. Uh, Socks is going to walk. No, <laughs> all right, thank God. Someone looked at their hero. Like, wait, what? Yeah, dude, look, look at this damage on this bounty hunter. Uh oh, ice, 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 maybe in trouble here. Does not have a TP this time, and they'll just go straight in on him. Easy oh, pick off. Oh, didn't even have to pop the dust. Stone cold from Soxa. This PA very close to level six, finds it there. Still only a 1K net worth lead, despite being 5-0. I mean, definitely great stuff for NIP. There are three cores at the top, but just now breaching 2k. No, pretty significant yeah, for 7 morph. minutes. All right, fair enough. This guy is poor. He is he is down. <laughs> He's lying. <laughs> He's in the triple digits. He's level 3. Oh, uh, I mean that's actually not that bad, honestly. It's just like combined with this net worth it just looks really perfect. But uh, I mean him and PVD are basically the same stature. All right, so if I I'm a fanatic. I, I really want kills, honestly. I feel like I, I want to make use of this track, right? It's up. It's good to go. Who am I playing with if I'm Bounty Hunter? I want my Lion to have six. Well, my Lion doesn't have six. So I want a Black Hole. I don't have Black Hole. And now I've got a Death Prophet in the mid lane. So they're bringing everything to try this one out here. But Fada senses the aggression. He backs up. He gets a Silence on two. The triple Siphon. It will get broken. However, it's a nice Ice Shard. Blocks out Jabs and Abed. Looking for more, perhaps. A silence the other way. They will grab jabs. Now Abed on the run. Does have DP morph, but not much HP to play with. Another silence from Fata. And it looks like it'll just be a kill on the lion as NIP head back to farming. Still no kills on the board here. Poor Fnatic. It's okay. Uh, jabs dying was only 74 gold given. Or lost, rather, for himself. And uh, Peter got the kill, so... 2k lead now. Now up top, some tracks coming out. Ice, ice, ice wrapping around. They're going to move into the tower. There's the black hole on top of the snowball. PA low but still alive. Follow-up stun will grab her. Now looking for more. Tusk gets hexed up under the tower. It's ice, ice, ice on the run. He is dusted. Soxa tracked. Could still go down. But ice, ice, ice will be able to make it back. Ooh, now coming jabs, in, looking though. for more. It's the lion and it's jabs. Dude, dance away. Deserved. Very nice. Good use of the track there to uh, get back in. A little sign of life for Fnatic. Two kills up on the board now. Bounty's spawning in about 15. Yeah, they, they can definitely get the top one. Uh, might go both ways to the darks here, though. Three three's coming down with the Centaur. Yeah, I got that Helm of the Dominator now. Ice thought better of it. He starts running away. Oh, oh, I Locked can't run out. the shards, though. I think this is going to be a dead bounty hunter. Enigma still comes in to grab the rune, but it's going to cost him a bounty hunter. Bottom tower is under attack. And 3-3 uh, having this helm. He just kind of picked it up a little while ago. 
but already up to 800 gold on top of that here and once he clears up some of these camps this wave but uh I mean, this is basically a farming tool for Darks here. It's uh, obviously a really nice aura to have on your team, especially with a PA, and adds a nice element of control, but it lets you basically be Beastmaster, and now he's going to try and add a little bit of pressure here, too, as he does have the Catapult ready to go. Very nice. Jab's just trying to get six in the mid lane. He has his Tome now, so Bounty Hunter already coming. Uh, I love this. They, they want to just smoke up together, right? Radiance middle tower so six tower. instantly pulls the smoke out. But someone else is going to have to come mid if they want to rotate off this tower. Exactly. I'm not sure what the play is. Bounty Hunter is still level 6. He hasn't really made much progression. Yo, Sox is just going to YOLO dust Radiant in a second. Here. This guy is going in. Well, maybe not. He's just going to get what? brought down. <laughs> that, that ward is done. Well, once they get a sentry, I, that was a little interesting. Easiest plus 50 of Lion's life right there. Darkseer getting scouted out a bit by the Bounty Hunter. Darkseer already up to another 1,500 gold, man. His farm is incredible. Now number one. Arcane Boots yeah. picked up. And Stark, once again, uh, difference attack. to the tie, eh? You know, he just can't quite farm as fast. Ace going for the Battle Fury, Trent. Yeah, it's the uh, same reasoning as before, too. No need to really rush it. Uh, no, uh, no clear way that you would win, it's just oh, like a, oh. a solid Ice, ice, start. ice. Caught by a snowball. A three on one. I don't think Bounty Hunter is going to be able to do much there. See you later, bud. Well, he has definitely made space, though. I mean, he was the top core on the side of Fnatic for a while, it felt like, and then uh, now he's the bottom. So, clearly, he has managed to uh, boost up his allies he's one very way giving. or another. He's, he's a charitable young man. Yeah, it seems to be. And uh, Abed has just been alone top for a while. You know, I keep checking back on him, and uh, PBD got the tower deny in his face, which was nice. And he is going for the Manta this game, too, thanks to the Death Prophet. Definitely like that defensive option. Mm -hmm. Glad he did not try to rush a Lincolns this game. I yeah. think that style has fallen out of vogue, but um, it, it would have been awful here. It's way too slow. And you'll see MP goes for the uh, most tides now at level 9. will tend to get the gush, and then at 10 they grab the talent. So even at level 1, it does a nice bit of damage. Mm -hmm. Tide with mana issues. Definitely advantageous to keep at level 1. But speaking of Tide, looking for a Ravage. Can he get it off? There she blows. Connects on quite a few, but follow up. He gets cut down. Now they're going to try to bring down Abed the DP. Inside. Abed actually jumps in and does a lot of damage with these right clicks. They go one for one. Another fight breaking out down bottom. Perhaps. Nope. Bounty Hunter just giving some damage. Now the Shrine. Maybe NIP look to re-engage. Ends up being a pretty good trade for Fnatic, though. They also get the tower out of it. Last hit goes the way of the Enigma. Yeah, really the only downside is that Bounty wasn't there. Uh, which is one of the ways that they're, of course, going to try and get back in this game. And, you know, Sox had dove in for that ward a while back, and uh, they never got rid of it. So he knows that the line is nearby. He knows that the bounty's there. Uh, so they have a good read as to where they're moving at the moment. It looks like they're actually trying to intercept here, perhaps. Maybe they just want to go farm this camp. Morphling definitely uh, showing what he can do in these team fights. Oh. To credit Ice that point is coming in mid here. Just putting the damage on a Peter. Trying to force a curse here. Whoa. This is that level 7 I was talking about. It, it really comes off half. Peter, Peter definitely needs dust. Now he's got three sentries. All right. They just got delivered on the courier, though. Uh, I'd like to see, come nighttime, uh, this double warding from the bounty hunter, too. Definitely a classic when you're playing the hero. Mm -hmm. Oh, sentry down. Oh, oh he's, he's going to walk right into it. Ace is there. He's got some friends nearby. Snowball. They've got some dust. And again, this bounty is going to be left without any options. Jeez, uh, the armor from the phase boots was certainly helping out, though. I mean, he had 15. And uh, there's only 200 damage crits coming at the moment from that PA. But, uh, yeah, the, t the tips come out as they're just saying, yeah, nice dive, dude. Ch not chase enough, the Wyvern uh, some more. Not enough for DeWalrus Punch. No. So, gold has actually shifted to favor Fnatic. It's 10 to 4. Still feels like NIP is in control. But this kind of flawless game they had going on, Fnatic are handling it just fine. Yeah, and the gold is pretty well split, too. Uh, DJ's has been farming a lot of neutrals. Abed's been mostly on the lanes. <laughs> NIP. 3-3 uh, three, three just set the Setar up and denied the bounty rune in Abed's face. That was pretty good. Nice. 
Nice DP indeed. getting very close to her Yules. Always a key item on this hero. Oh, you're dead. Bounty Hunter again. Caught in the mid with some silence and follow-up damage and another Walrus Punch. Tusky there to uh, secure the kill. This has just been the Ice 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 show in the last couple minutes here. <laughs> it's not a great one. It's a rerun. It's uh, not very enjoyable for him, I'm sure. And a wall up top here going for the solo play with the Centaur. Whoa. DJ does have a mech, so a hard kill to secure. Your Winter Wyvern on the way. That'll force a TP. Winner's Curse oh, actually damage. might be enough. Oh. It's there. <laughs> Where are the tips? Where are the tips after that? Come on now. That oh, was tied. Why? Why did you finish your TP? I was top tier. PPD with the impeccable game sense. Last auto attack. Anchor to the face. The best part is that he came in and gave Vlads to all of the creeps that were also <laughs> wailing away on the Enigma. <laughs> Mid, silence on Abed. Soxa was there, invisible and waiting. This could be a quick pick on the Morphling, but no, Abed on a sliver of HP, able to waveform and morph up to the high ground. Close call there. Would have been a huge kill for NIP. Battle Fury up on Ace, though. And uh, I guess now we look at uh, the old uh, the Roshi Roche soon here too, right? It's, it's turned in one of those games, but mm. much like uh, our first game, it, it's the whole story of like, yeah, I guess it was the second game, right? Where it was like, NIP just never wanted to go in Roche. Because you got Black Hole, you're all tracked up, so it's hard enough to get in there anyway, and then you got Ravage. Radiance middle and uh, it'll be Fnatic instead who are going to be able to secure it uh, first with this medallion, I would wager. It'll be a tough fight for NIP, but a great wraparound here to start things off. They're looking for DJ. Could go both Anifa ways. Fnatic trying hole. to start the fight off onto 33. Surge into the tree line. He's going to get brought down first, but a silence connects on three. Good winner's curse onto the Enigma again. Still has Black Hole. There's the Ravage. Mech's already been used. DP going to survive wolf. a little bit longer. She's got the ult off. DJ got, does go down as a dagger chases him into the trees. Heal onto Fada from the Winter Wyvern. Now more damage as they chase out. Dust has been used on the Ice Ice Ice. He's going to have to stay in the back line here. Stun from the line. Connects on Tusk. They've got the damage for a follow-up, and it's a one for two. Fnatic taking this fight so far. NIP low on options. Exorcism just expiring now. So this fight probably going to peter out from the dire unless they can grab somebody with this PA. But Fnatic not going to push too deep. Instead, they'll just deward and continue their control of this enemy jungle. Yeah, not a lot from the Darkseer or the Tusk in that fight. You can see even the damage contribution just wasn't really up there. Uh, not able to get a wall down. I'm, I'm not sure if it was still in CD, but uh, definitely did not come out clearly. And the DP just not quite at a peak. She really good Yules, but that is a costly leftover kill here, though. Are they going to find uh, some more? Snowball across, trying to go on to jabs. There's a vacuum in. They've also got Abed. He's getting low. DJ trying to do what he can. Still has the black hole. He didn't use it last time. They'll get the stun onto Tusk. And all of a sudden, again, it's NIP that could be in trouble. It's a nice wall. Going to slow down DJ a little bit. Maybe trying to turn for the hole, but he doesn't have it. He gets brought down first, saves the cooldown. And in the end, it will be NIP that find the victory in this scuffle. What? Uh, why? Uh, why were they there? What was left to gain in this area? I'm not sure. Didn't it feel like they kind of had a resounding victory, and it was like, all right, cool, let's go, let's get out. They kind of just hung around too long. I mean, maybe if they were trying to deward, I would understand. Dire have great vision around their jungle, so they could see here, like around the tier one. Okay, they haven't retreated yet. Okay, they haven't retreated this uh, way. They've got all the access points covered. They're uh, they're worried they've gone in the roach pit here too. As you can see, they've smoked up on the side of NIP. And this is going to let them catch the bounty. Smoke pops. Soxa doesn't instantly dust, though. Maybe it was worried about the angle. Plus, no one else had popped yet. And uh, they are correct, though. They're in the pit. They're staring it off with the medallion. You can kill it sort of quickly here. Not your Next fastest Roche, but the medallion makes a difference. With the black hole still available, this is actually pretty scary. Ravage up in less than 10 seconds. Roche at about half HP now. NIP moving into position. Uh, I think Peter flew too early. I don't think he should have flown until the ice shard scouted. They might still grab one, though. Bounty Hunter caught by that centaur stun. Tied, hit by the winner's curse. Snowball forward. They're going to try to find that kill up on the high ground as Death Prophet pops her ulti. 
Not enough damage as the Ravage and the Black Hole have come. It just barely clips the DP, but there's no follow-up damage. Oh, Jabs embrace. goes down on the backside, and this is looking like bad news bears for Fnatic. Enigma stuck inside of the shards. They've got the Wall of Replica on top, and the Morphling gets brought down. A triple kill for 33's Darkseer tied. The only one that survives as he limps away. They'll move into the Roche Pit, and it's NIP that will claim the H. He had Iron Shells just on everyone during that fight, too. Uh, the, the majority of the damage, though, coming out from the Death Prophet. Just Crypt Swarm after Crypt Swarm. And uh, she just got off a full rotation of her spells, right? Double Siphon, double Crypt, double Silence. And a perfect Cold Embrace there from yeah. PVD, too. Not often you get to use this skill that early in the game, but... Now MP, again, just like the last fight, he just somehow manages to die He's after the linger. fight is over. Yeah. It was perfectly done by PPD in that fight, though, because it broke up the combo of the Ravage and the Black Hole. You could see the Tide just trying to get the Ravage off. The Black Hole wasn't quite positioned on top of it, and just not allowing them to not stack that combo made the fight so much easier for NIP and ensured the survival of the Death Prophet. And if she lives with that ulti on, then, well, you know how the rest of the team fight's going to go. We saw it. <laughs> Ice Ice is really abusing the fact that Peter is never bringing dust, though. I, I wonder if Peter is actually doing it on purpose at this point. I feel like he wants Ice, because every time he checks Peter and sees he doesn't have detection, he just goes up and steals his gold. And look, he's doing it right now, I think. Because uh, the Tusk is wards. lingering nearby with the dust, but... NIP punishing here. They've taken that tier two up top, now putting pressure on that tier two mid. Snowball forward onto the bounty hunter. They might not have the damage, but still a lot of pressure. A nice vacuum into the centaur stomp, beautifully done by 33, and gets a very deserved kill on that bounty hunter. Tier two falls. And that's a BKB now done for the Death Prophet, and they have three and a half minutes left on this Aegis. They, under no uncertain terms, want a tier three. That is the goal with this Aegis, ideally a full set of racks, of course, but you really want a game plan for that second Roche when you have such a hard fight uh, for that Aegis and Cheese. You need to make sure that they have no way to TP back into it. Uh, this has themselves. been one hell of a hero Centaur Conqueror, though. It's insane yes. how much it changes the scope of Darkseer, adding one AoE stun into the mix like that. Yeah, because like MSS was really the first person to start bringing that out like crazy yeah. on the Darkseer, and uh, of course it's become a staple for everyone at this point. Well, Deso up on the PA, also just about to be level 15. So Ace uh, kind of living up to the standard set in this series in a good spot. They walk up to the high ground, double silence. NIP had the trap ready and waiting, and these poor mice on Fnatic walked right into it. Three dead just like that. Two of them without buybacks. Morphling will be able to wait for him up to the high ground, but NIP get handsomely rewarded for that aggressive positioning. They, they know everything Fnatic wants to do before Fnatic know what they want to do. Like, yeah. they're just perfectly saying, okay, if I was Fnatic right now, how would I play this game? And that's how they caught them at the Roche Pit. That's how they're catching them, trying to leave their base for wards to try and go for, like, a smoke gank or something. That's how they caught the AM in game two. That second exactly, kill, right? where does AM want to be? He's farming the lane. He's going to blink into the jungle to keep farming. If we're right there waiting, it's an easy kill every time. And that was kind of like the nail in the coffin that ripped that entire game apart. Exact same mentality. Yeah, and now they have a uh, two-minute timer still left on this Aegis. The 10-second BKB wasn't even required for those picks, and uh, they're going to play it patient, though. They didn't force the high ground there, I guess, just knowing that there is the Ravage and the Black Hole back online. Not going to be worth it. And uh, the Centaur bravely still stands by 3-3 as they look to join their team. Well, Manta style up on Morphling. So Abed, Morbid Mask, Manta, he's still... Pretty broke, number one on his team for whatever that's wow. worth, but I don't know Check if the Manta is uh, going to be enough. A, a key item against the Silence, of course, so warranted, yeah. but still just doesn't it, really make him that intimidating. I don't have that same fear in my heart the way I do when I see, oh, PA's got a Deso. Okay. He, well. um, he needs to use this Morph Duration talent, and he needs to become Darkseer, and he needs to vacuum into a black hole. That's like how they win a fight, honestly. Uh, take a look at that win probability here. Oh, never mind. There's a fight coming. But I'll, I'll let you know. It's about 3%. Okay, Snowball forward, not going to catch the target he was looking for. Now on the other side, they'll find Darkseer in the tree right, line, but he's pretty here. beefy. He's been hexed up, Jabs goes down straight away. Great silence on the Tide. Oh, he's trying, man. They, they know this is the only play. Abed surges himself in again. And they're going to smoke up the, the Enigma. There it is, there it vacuum is. into the Ravage. They don't have the black hole. 
But now the other way, the real Dark Seer has come back and the Black Hole connects on three. They've got a big setup, but just no damage. Two down as the PA joins the battle. Winner's Curse slows them down. Another big silence from Fada on two, and they are just getting cleaned up. The mop and bucket is here. The blood puddles up plenty as MP gets chased down by Ace. The Morphling heads back to the high ground. Fnatic quickly running out of options. Yeah, somehow MP gets out of there, finds a haste rune, and they'll even get a couple bounties. But I mean, you saw it, right? They knew. The only way is if we can get this vacuum. But they needed the Ravage and the Black Hole and the Midnight Pulse, Pulse all stacked. Just couldn't get it done. It's obviously an extremely uh, long shot Hail Mary that they had to opt for. But, you know, credit that they even went for it. Credit but, that they uh, even got half of it. I mean, vacuum yeah. into Ravage under that. Uh, that context, I think, is still reasonably impressive. But another vacuum into Centaur on two. Perfectly combos with that silence from Death Prophet. MP does rejoin the fray. They keep the Tier 3 tower standing and might actually repel NIP for now. Fada's still just holding this ult. I wonder, maybe thinking about potential Roche. Still too far off. Nope. Yeah, they're just not committing for the high ground. They just don't quite see it, and this will be it then. Yeah, the 10 second BKB for Ace must be what they were waiting for. Uh, Peter's about to have a uh, Aether Lens too, if he can get this next wave that comes out of the Radiant Base. PA yeah, starting be, uh, to get to that unstoppable point, it feels like. I don't know how they handle this BKB. I wonder if Peter goes for the, uh, the Night Vision. How much time's left? Three minutes? Let's see. What do you think, Peter? Oh, he's not 15 yet. Never mind. Half a level to go. 500 night vision is more than you think it is. Yeah, it's really sick. Um, it's but, a, you know, if this nighttime's ending the second he hits 15, he'll probably just take the health. Yeah, this, this game... I mean, NIP is basically one victorious fight away from doing some pretty crippling damage. No glyph available for the Radiant. That'll be an easy tier three as the exorcism gets deployed. Ravage down for another 10. Black hole for 45. Not an easy defense for Fnatic, and they're going to have to watch their mid lane get destroyed. I mean, they can just easily transition there. No glyph available. And uh, still about a quarter duration left on the ulti. Yep. Dyer just used their glyph offensively there to keep the momentum on this push. Easy top lane rotation, exorcism expiring now, and they'll just back out. Abed's uh, toming up here. He's trying to get to 18 because it's the only way they can fight. He he can't win fights as Morphling. He needs to become these uh, NIP heroes. So he already has the Morph Duration talent, and then when he gets to, once he has 18, he's going to have the 100% uptime. He needs something. He's trying to grab that E blade, but I don't even oh, know. Oh, I love this pickup for. 3-3. Three, three. It's always hard as a Darkseer player to tell when the BKB is worth it because you feel like you really want to tank a ton of the damage and so you want to go for Greaves first like every game but then you're thinking like do I want to pipe this game do I want a Crimson Guard but I think that he just needs to ensure that he's going to be up right and, and this big black hole coming through uh, as well as the uh, the Ravage that Wombo combo that Fnac need to hit he just wants to ensure that he's getting off that Guardian's Greaves to save his whole team. Mm -hmm. Definitely agreed. He's got Shiva's queued up next. I think also a fine choice here. Tank up the whole team by minimizing their damage output. Although Death Prophet just picked up a Shiva's, so looks like yeah, that we'll changes. See that. Uh, three threes two and right blink. away. It's like, hey, all right, I'll get a blink. Yeah, sounds good. Glad they Ends picked up a Shiva's either oh, way. Though. That's a and they'll pop. use it here. Hello, bounty. Easy yep, smoke detection uh, there. And it is a, a long roast time. My God, he's still level 10. Jeez, he has not progressed, eh? Remember when he was level 7? Yeah. How early that was? You know, like 15 minutes ago? I remember that, yeah. Yeah. He no, he's not gone far. He's really fallen off. They've made the life of this bounty hunter a, a living hell for the last 10 minutes. You know, Ice has been trying to instill some chaos, be that mobile ward, and they have punished him so many times. Now 1, 10, and 2. And they only have eight kills, so I guess you know, three kill involvement isn't that bad percentage-wise, but, man, that's <laughs> not the kind of score you want to see on your bounty hunter. <laughs> no, it's really not. <laughs> percentage-wise, he's a, you know, a third of his team's kills and a third of their kills. <laughs> <That's what I mean. laughs> the math checks out. 
All right, so what are we at on Roche? Still uh, about 30 seconds here? A minute, something like right, that? All right, Jab's going for the other bounty. No, he doesn't. 20 seconds. Oh. I think this is close to the last big objective. We'll see NIP over 20K in the lead, just looking for this Aegis cheese. Oh, okay. All right. What is what is the play here with Abed? Does he... He's got the tome for 20. I'm trying to give us any way that he can save this game with a target's allies, but there's not really a great ally. Midnight Pulse is like the best thing, really. But he really needs the vacuum, so I I don't think he can afford to go for it. I think he's kind of stuck going for the waveform attacks targets, but we'll see. Agreed. He's, really he's at least much. considering it. I guess the control from Lion is potentially interesting. He's going to go for it. I don't know. I feel like he just... Like, let's say he takes the Midnight Pulse. What does he do for the other 40 seconds? Is that worth it enough, I guess? Maybe it is. Throw it a Malefist, throw it a Midnight Pulse, and just go back to Morphling. I feel like the Midnight Pulse is the most bang for your buck you can get out of your allies, and it'll be a Blade Mail next for MP, just trying to get every little item they can at the moment. And there's the E-Blade. So they'll have some new tools for this fight, but they're going to have to do it into the spoils from Roche. Already at below half HP, and Fnatic not in any kind of position to contest this. As they shove creeps out their top and middle lanes. They will smoke up. Looks like they want to try to contest this now. Two left in the pit. Ice, ice, ice. Needs to be a little careful. He does get off a track, but wards down. They almost catch him. So she's on the DP. Aegis on the PA. Two great heroes, respectively, for those items. PA just goes hog wild, and then uh, Fada doesn't really have to worry about his ulti coming back too soon with the cheese. So Abed is already into the, the Enigma. So this is their plan. Oh, Ravage. Oh, they whiffed the Ravage. Not what they wanted. Now Abed gets initiated on. Jabs jumps in the back line. Almost brings down the Prophet, and he does. Cold Embrace can't save him in time. But now the Wall of Replica connects on three. Very nicely placed. Jabs on the backside. There was a buyback from the DP as she still has the ultimate. So she is going to come in to try to get into the fight. They end up with that kill on the Lion to boot. Not bad terrible for Fnatic given that the Ravage was a complete win. But now a difficult hold. There's their Glyph. The DP ult hasn't even been used yet. Still a BKB on the PA. Remember, no Aegis. Was expired in that last fight. Fada needs to be a little careful, but Soxa jumps in and they just chunk the Enigma. Down he goes. Buyback available. He does use it, but now they'll lose Ice Ice Ice. And even if he gets off that black hole, they might not have the damage to follow up. Tier 3 tower taking a lot of damage. Will get brought down. Exorcism still with plenty of time left. I like Fata's patience on that. 5v5 now. Black hole, no ravage. Brutal. Brutal way to close out your game. You know, they had the double midnight pulse. They thought they had something, but uh, Sox had just ruined it all with those shards. Just clipped the Tide Hunter like 0.4 seconds or something, like right before he was about to jump for the Ravage. I mean, probably wouldn't have been enough anyway, but that's a little demoralizing at that point. Mm -hmm. Top lane of Barracks. We'll see if they stay standing. Fada has lost his ultimate now. Lion in the Grave does have a buyback, but going to hold it for now. Slow and steady, NIP realizing this game not done yet. Still potentially throwable despite a pretty massive lead. Is it though? <laughs> well, they're at least respecting the power of Fnatic. <laughs> Two lanes down. I mean, it's low. I, my point is the fact that they can't just run up to the high ground and finish it shows that Fnatic has a little bit left. They, they've got one good fight. They're respecting the power of this black hole ravage combo if they can actually pull it off. But I hear you. What you're saying is they're a bunch of nerds. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> is that basically what you're getting to? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, all right, cool. That's, That's what NIP is saying in their in their booth right now. God, these yeah. nerds. They really going to defend this? Yeah, exactly. But hey. Uh, ice, Ice, Ice. Looking to continue the streak here. Blur gets popped. Oh, maybe it's MP. He does have a Ravage up finally. Walrus Punch blows the Ravage now. Looking for a kill on Ace, but BKB is there, and Ace will be just fine. Instead, turns it around and brings down the tide. No buyback, no black hole. Now DJ, he might get left behind here. He's going to be silenced. He'll die with Black Hole still on cooldown, or off cooldown, yeah. rather, and no buyback. 
He didn't uh, pop. Like, he could have black hole and killed the PA potentially, but he, of course, couldn't see the Wyvern, and he's like, yeah, there's no point. Yeah. Even if I just kill this PA, we still lose. She has buyback. I need, like, all of them, so. Yep. Tough way for it to end. Possibly the final fight here as they get a quick pick on the Lion. BKB's used. Abed, well, he's an enigma right now. He's trying to put down some pulses from the late night. But I, I doubt it'll be enough at this point. Uh, Megas have been secured. Three dead without buyback. And another exorcism. The cherry on top for this Game 3 victory. NIP well-deserved yeah. after a, a pretty intense series. It's uh, not often you win all three games in a best of three. But it kind of feels like NIP did. I mean, Peter almost, it was like I thought they were going to win that first game, honestly. Uh, but the bear was too much for them. But uh, the following two games were not nearly as close yeah. as our first one. Absolutely. I think uh, seeing these, seeing this series, NIP feeling like the better team. Impressive that performance. bounty just did nothing this game. It's, it feels like they're, they're having a hard time enabling all three of their core players. It's like they can get two of them to work, but I mean, it's one thing to sack it, but it feels like in several of these games, Fnatic just have a hero that does actually nothing. Where I'm just like, yeah, so what was the impact from this guy? Like, what did, like, the Invoker had a couple good tornadoes after he had a minus 16 second cooldown. The Bounty Hunter was just, I didn't even see good wards coming out from Ice 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 this game. Like, yeah. they weren't even getting courier snipes or anything like that, or this deep vision that helps them. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm felt a little there. discombobulated here. One thing for sure, though, Ace, this series, man, he was my standout. He looked good in every single game, 17-1 and 16. His team does yeah, such true. a good job setting him up to succeed. They're so good at playing this 4 plus 1. We're going to go make commotion. You farm your shit. Join us when you're ready. Then we're going to win the game. And they're they're pretty darn good at executing that formula. You know, it's... yeah. And not even just in the game plan, too. I felt like the drafting fundamentals from NIP were just super easy. Like, they weren't complicated drafts sitting here like, oh, look, they have Wyvern, Tusk, PA. I wonder if they'll pick Darkseer. It's like, yes, this is a very strong combo. Or they pick the, the Grimstroke before, and it's like, hmm, I think they're going to pick Doom. And then I'm watching Fnatic, and I'm like, so uh, Abed's playing Annie Mage. Okay, all right, that makes sense. And uh, we got the greediest support trio. Uh, of Bounty Hunter, <laughs> Lion, and Enigma. It, yeah, I'm not so sure about this one. Great uh, Dark Seer pick also. 33, yeah. I think, with a really impressive performance that game. Great farm, great rotations. Had multi-hero vacuum after multi-hero vacuum. You know, I don't think you can ask for much more from your Ishkafel. Oh, boy. Ishkafel. 9 to 37. Yeah, no, no dunce cap here, baby. You know, he's just a conehead. Yep. Well, boys okay. and girls, uh, that is our first series in the books, and we will have our second heat for Group B coming up next. That is PSG LGD up against Infamous. So some China versus South America action. We're going to cut to a commercial break, put up the timer, and then uh, we're going to come back to get our second series of the day.